Well, it's now twelve days to the inauguration of Bola Tinubu as the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and we are counting down. Let's talk about government of national unity and why it's important for the incoming president to look beyond his ethnic and party affiliation in order to lead a more united Nigeria. Thanks for joining us on the program. You can also contribute and share your thoughts now on Twitter if you use the hashtag Count down to May 29. Remember to mention at TVC News NG and at Nifemi Oguntoye. Well, let's uh, begin with an update from the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, where the court has now adjourned the petition filed by Labour Party to 19th May for further pre hearing. The adjournment of the court was at the instance of the Labour Party, who sought for more time to tidy up its processes. Judiciary correspondent Celestine Area covered the proceedings today. Substantial progress in the petition filed by Labour Party has not been made. Today's pre-hearing session started with an altercation between the acting national chairman of the Labour Party and supporters of the abbreviated faction of the party. Mr. Papa has approached the faction seeking to know why they are in court. He, however, decided to lay the issue to rest. When hearing in the petition had properly commenced, let me their papa as well as the national women's leader of the party, Dudu Lamungu, tried to make an appearance for the Labour Party. Justice Harona Tamani noted that if two persons are making an appearance for the party, they will not be put on record. Counsel to the Labour Party began with addressing the court on the order issued by the court the last adjourned date. He told the court that the Independent National Electoral Commission is yet to give them over 70% of the documents they had requested from the commission. He stressed that an annex resident electoral commission in River State told the party that it has no form EC8A to give to the party. He prayed the court for an adjournment to enable him to regularize his processes. Counsel to the president elect, however, disagreed with the submissions of counsel to the Labour Party as the order of the court of the last adjourned date was for parties to cooperate and narrow down issues. Counsel to Anik noted that the issue raised by the Labour Party is the refusal to pay the sum of 1.5 million naira as legal fee for the CCT document that is sought to receive from Sokoto State. And also as pertaining to the document from River State, part of the documents were given to the political party, but they insisted that all documents must be brought in before they could accept any documents from the commission. INEC has a lead council. I believe that something good may come out of a chat that I'm supposed to have with him today. How you display yourself here shows how you intended to lead Nigerians, and this has not been a very good example. Trouble again started after the pre-hearing session when supporters of a brilliant faction of the party refused an acting national chairman Namidia Papa to address the press. This led to serious altercations between both factions as it took the intervention of security personnel to restore peace to the court. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. Now let's turn attention to our conversation today. It's widely reported that President-elect Bola Tinubu has met with NNPP presidential candidate Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso in France. Uh, sources say the talks were about the possibility of working together as well as reconciliation along party lines and that the main subject is getting Kwankwaso to join a government of national unity. Perhaps this president-elect, uh, uh, this is president-elect marching words with action Recall that Bola Tinubu extended the olive brand to the opposition after he received the certificate of return at the ICC in Abuja. And this was exactly what he said. This great project called Nigeria beckons to us all. It is bigger and more important than any partition divide. To my supporters, I ask you to continue to have faith in the mission that we have articulated. Though those who didn't support me, I ask that 
you not allow the disappointment of this moment to keep you from realizing the historic national progress we can make by working together. We must join hands in this common endeavor to pull the nation through. In a phrase, I'm asking you to work with me. I may be the president in election, but I need you more importantly. Nigeria needs you a lot more than just one person. My heart, my door are open to you. I ask you to come in so that we may begin the task of rebuilding our national home together, day by day, brick by brick. Now let's talk about Ashiwaju's proposal for a government of national unity. The closest we had to this was in 2007 when uh, then President Omar Musa Yaradua proposed a government of national unity. I recall that when he sworn in his cabinet on 26 July 2007, it included two ministers from the opposition ANPP. How feasible is this effort at national unity? And how important is it for the coming administration? I'm joined now by strategy and governor's expert, Yemi Makpadero, also joining me is strategist and policy analyst, Baba Yusuf, who is at our Abuja studio. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Uh, let's begin from Abuja. Mr. Yusuf, the 2023 presidential election result figures seem to have shown to us again just how sharply divided Nigerians have become along the lines of politics, ethnicity, and religion. Uh, but how critical is mending these cracks to the success of the incoming administration. Thank you, Nifade. Uh, just to refresh your memory a little bit, the history of government of national unity in the last 23 years actually started when General Olusegun Obasanjo became the president in 1999. If you recall, there was an alliance between alliance, the then Alliance for Democracy of which Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu emerged as governor of Lagos State and the likes of Chief Olusegun Oshoba. And you had the, uh, the alliance was with the, between Alliance for Democracy and the All People's Party, APP, led by the late, you know, uh, Mahmoud Waziri, which later, you know, emanated and it worked as a government of national unity at the first 1999-2003. You had the likes of Aisha Ismail, uh, Chief Vincent of Love for late, uh, late Muhammad Shata of APP, and you like, have the like, you had the likes of Chief Bolaige uh, from the Alliance for Democracy, forming the cabinet, first uh, Federal Executive Council cabinet for Chief Olusegun Obasanjo at that time, then moving on to the time you mentioned. Now back to the question of um, the critical issue of the need for unity in Nigeria at this point, uh, at a point where Nigeria is most polarized along ethnic, tribal, religious, and regional lines. Uh, this is a crack that has been there as a fault line for a long time, but it has been more eminent and more robust at this point in time. And therefore, uh, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and indeed all leaders that have emerged at national and subnational level, should be very conscious of that in the way and manner they form their government, their various cabinets, and run the various government at national and subnational level. Particularly at this instance, uh, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu as president, the need for him to first of all, you know, uh, uh, com comfort the mind of Nigerians across the divide that he is a president for Nigerians not for one part of the country, not for a particular class of people, and indeed not only for the APC, to assuage the fears of Nigerians, because the critical issue in Nigeria today is the fear factor, you know, and for these steps that we are about to discuss today may be one of the steps to take, if indeed any, to see how those fears will be assuaged, and then the actions that will demonstrate that and bring Nigeria more together and move forward in the progressive direction.
Absolutely. Let's bring in Mr. Mark Paduro to uh, uh, this um, conversation. Let's talk about how this has fed in recent history. In naming his cabinet in 2007, recall that President Yaradua brought some of his critics into government. Uh, the main opposition party, the NNPP, was given two ministerial slots for agreeing to join the government of national unity. How strategic was that move? And how much impact did you say, would you say it had on his three-year tenure at the time? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nathan, for having me on this program. Um, there is no doubt that uh, Nigeria is one of the most diverse uh, countries of the world. There will always be the challenge of, of building bridges, reaching out to different uh, contending interests, particularly after elections. Um, it becomes even so difficult within the ruling parties. We think that when elections, you are still going to find a situation whereby um, a lot of interest will be jostling for our attention. And that has not been scarce, you know, um, even in this uh, dispensation. Like my colleague in Abdi Abuja studio said, um, this has been a recurring decimal. Um, a lot of people tend to have forgotten that um, in 1999, General Batonjo actually, not necessarily because he was required by law, you know, to do that, because in the presidential system of government, it's actually a winner takes all. Mm. But in order to carry the people along, uh, bring in the different tendencies to support the government in its programs and policies, it has become a tradition that, you know, parties that won elections especially at the federal level, uh, want to reach out to elements of the opposition. And this is not surprising. Beyond trying to uh, get, give everyone you know, a sense of belonging, it is also very strategic in that it has the tendency of um, minimizing or mitigating uh, the issue of uh, uh, resistance mm -hmm. programs and policies of government. In fact, it, it, well, it seems we have issues um, uh, getting um, uh, connected with Mr. Mark Padero at the time. It got very interesting at a point that sitting chairman. We'll get back to Mr. Mark Padero shortly uh, uh, while we work on that connection. Uh, uh, but Mr. Yusuf, it's one thing to extend an olive branch. is another thing for it to be received on the other hand. In 2007, recall that ANPP and PPA agreed to join Yaradua's government, but ACN didn't. As a matter of fact, according to the party's spokesperson, Lai Mohammed, at that time, it was quoted to have said that the presidential system of government that we operate today makes no provision for a government of national unity. He went on to say that uh, his party believes that joining the government of national unity will negate all that we've stood for throughout all the years, which is multi-party democracy. How optimistic are you that opposition parties, you know, will oblige this time? Uh, if Amy, what is going to influence this concept if it plays out as speculated? is the ability of Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu to reign in his political capital, uh, polit demonstrate political sagacity. Uh, as you can see, if we can use the scenario of the engagement with uh, engineer Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso, presidential candidate of the NP NNPP, you can see the sagacity playing out leveraging long-term deepened relationships starting from 1999 when they came into the polity as mid governors. Uh, Rabi Musa Konkoso, governor of Kano State, and we had Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, governor of Lagos State. The relationship matrix, uh, applying emotional intelligence, 
to be able to get the critical stakeholders, first of all, to step forward and agree to extend the hands of fellowship to say, yes, we agree, we can give you some level of trust to see how we can engage, is going to be the deciding factor or the critical success factor moving forward for that to cascade to the followers or the supporters of those critical stakeholders, and that will permeate into the generality of the polity. And those are the steps to take. Of course, what remains to be seen is part of the blueprint the president-elect would you know, put before these critical stakeholders to say, this is what I have for Nigeria, and you are going to be part of it in engendering unity, in engendering you know, uh, harmony, and also build the new confidence for a new Nigeria moving forward for us to, to deliver short to mid-term, if we look at the four years, uh, what will tell Nigerians that things are changing. So we will be very, very observant with regards to that. The track record of Ashwa Jubola Abadribu with regards to strategy, with regards to positioning, and this kind of engagement is there for us to see. We will see how these cards play out this time. Well, Mr. Bakadero, how does the president-elect carry his party along? If we can hear you now, you recall that, um, you know, just recently the APC is divided along uh, you know, interest lines about pa the party's decision to zone the leadership of the 10th National Assembly. How do you sell the idea of, you know, the uh, idea of national unity to those that worked, um, I mean, rather, bringing those that worked against the party on board, uh, how do you sell it to lawyer party members? Well, I didn't know at one point I was young dog by, you know, in the internet network. But I was alluding to that part, you know, in my response to your initial question, that everything is about interest, and there is nothing that you do that will meet every interest. However, you need to look at kind of equilibrium, and that um, leads us to this question that we have asked about satisfying, you know, the interests of party members, and also bringing in. Um, elements of position. Let me quickly point this out, that the, the government of national unity that we're talking about is not essentially, you know, an alliance or a coalition, the sort that you find in parliamentary system of government. Mm. Like I said, in the presidential system of government, the winner takes all. Well, no, however, however, because of our prevalent um, you know, uh, circumstances of our failure, or will I say, inability to forge Nigeria into a nation. Up to now, over 60 years after independence, you find it uh, a recurring decimal that people will appeal, you know, to various tendencies, including religion, ethnicity, and of course, uh, geopolitical zones. Mm. And like you said, even within the ruling party, it does appear that there is a big who we'll get what. And at this point, you want to also factor the opposition elements into the whole calculation. My, my, my uh, feeling is that um, I'm a bit optimistic that if there is anyone who is capable of bringing as many people to the table as possible, mm irrespective of their different persuasion, it is actually Ashwa Jubal Ahmed Tinubu because of his pedigree, because of his antecedents. Okay. And we could also see from the result of the election that he is the only one that tended to have the spread, which as an indication of a level of acceptability in 29 states out of, out of 36. Mm -hmm. So if there is anyone that has ability to bring contending forces together, and we could see even the way he has managed um, the, 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 the pre-primary and post-primary, and of course, the post-general election affairs of the party, you will discover that he seems to be a, a century, uh, a, a petal force Indeed. party, rather than a, a centrifugal force. All right, so let's attempt to do this in two minutes. Mr. Yusuf, if you can, I want us to talk about federal character. The Constitution, as we uh, speak, requires the president to appoint a minister from each state of the federation. What do you think unites us better, 
getting a representative from each state or having appointments based on merits that can bring about productive performance? It will be a mix of both. I call it a hybrid of options, given the situation we are in in Nigeria. If I mean, there's a reason why there are provisions in the Constitution you know, for this uh, representation from all regions. Uh, the reason is to foster unity. So, like I said in another forum, Nigeria is so blessed that we have the best of the best from every part of Nigeria. It is very easy for one that wants to be fair to look around Nigeria, the six Jewish political zone, across party, ethnicity, religion, and pick the best of the best amongst us and form a government. So it's very easy to balance between the two, competence, capacity, capacity and uh, equity in terms of the balance across the nation. While I'm at it quickly, we should also look at this engagement in France with the NNPP leader to look at it and also you know, put a pointer to the positive dynamics and permutations with the emergence of the leaders of the National Assembly. We know there's some chunk of numbers of the members of Harvard of Reps from Kano State that are represented, you know, as a representative elect, rallying around these numbers to ensure that uh, the emergence of the leader is in a way a manner that the APC wants to achieve, especially the leader is one of the possible strategic moves that Ashwaju is making. You know, just an addition to that. But a balance of capacity, competence, and representation from all parts of this country are critical. And I think we should take it on board that way. I believe Mr. President-elect that, has that very much in mind. It's a long haul to fix in Nigeria, but uh, uh, Nigerians expect the incoming administration to hit the ground running as soon as possible. Strategy and governance expert Yemi Makpadero will definitely bring you to the studio uh, when you are chanced. Uh, a big thank you to Baba Yusuf, who joined us um, from our Abuja studios, the group CEO of Global Investment and Trade Company. Gentlemen, thank you for your time on the program. And that's the countdown you. today. You can watch a repeat broadcast by 6 a.m. on West Day. Uh, uh, oh, tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow, Thursday. Join me again same time tomorrow uh, for yet another edition. I am Nifemi Ogutoye. Good to see you.